Okay. Well, thank you all for coming on a Wednesday night. How many of you have been enjoying the warmer weather? Has anyone had their windows open? Yes, there are some. I opened ours today. I like fresh air. What? You never closed? Oh, Mona's had theirs open since fall, <laughs> apparently. Okay. Well, did you bring your Bibles? Something to take notes with? Leaders are readers, and leaders are also note takers. It's good. Seriously, go back over your notes sometime. There's rich stuff in there. And how many of you know, if God spoke at once, it's not like it's dead. Right? If he spoke it, it's alive. That means anytime you read it, it always has something to say to you. Isn't that amazing? I love God's word. Okay. So we are going to talk tonight on faithfulness. And um, this is just a topic that kind of dropped in my heart as I was reading the other day, actually, in Acts. Um, but we're going to start, before we talk um, along the lines of faithfulness, that um, how many of you know you have to know you serve a God who's faithful? In order for me to be faithful, what do I have to? I have to know how good and how faithful God is. So we're going to look at a few verses tonight to start off before we talk about ourselves and faithfulness. We're going to look at God's faithfulness to us and what he says about himself. So 2 Timothy 2.13, it says this, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. How many of you are thankful that even when we're faithless, he still is faithful? Guess what that tells me? God knows that sometimes we're not going to be faithful. God knows that sometimes we're going to let go of his word. God knows that sometimes we're going to mess up, we're going to do things. But what does it say? He still is faithful. What does that tell me also? That even though I mess up, I can jump right back in. Why? Because he's loving and he's faithful. Aren't you thankful for that? So don't disqualify yourself because he's not disqualified you. Aren't you thankful for that? I was just texting Mona today, and we were talking, and you know there's sometimes that you can be down. There's sometimes the enemy comes at, at you. It seems like a barrage, but aren't you thankful that you can get right back up again? We know all the heroes of faith, they were pressed, they were crushed, but what was one thing about them? They didn't quit. They got back up. They grabbed a hold of the faithfulness and goodness of God, and it kept them in the race. And not even that, it marked them as a hero of faith. Sometimes I think we're too hard on ourselves because we, you know, get hard on ourselves and go, well, I dropped, or I, I fell short this week, or I did this. But aren't you thankful we can get back up? We can thank God for his goodness and his faithfulness. We can be faithful Faithfulness doesn't just mean that you're just let at it all the time and you never mess up. Because I see a lot of people in the Bible who were called faithful who messed up, who fell down. But what was the key? They got back up. Amen? Okay, um, Psalms 36.5 says, Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. What is that? It's unlimited. His love for us, his faithfulness to us, what is that basically saying? It's unlimited. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Just say that tonight. He's faithful. There's promises that you've been holding to, maybe you've let go of. Guess what? Here tonight to say, he's faithful. If he promised it, he's faithful to bring it about. Amen? So don't let go. I love this one. Revelation 19, 11, it says, I saw heaven standing open, and before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. That verse just so came alive to me today, whose rider, which we know is Jesus, his very name, his very nature is called Faithful and True. Just picture that to you today, tonight. He's faithful and he's true. Where the enemy has painted him as unfaithful and that he's fallen through on you, 
you picture, no, he's faithful and he's true. Amen? And I love that. He's a rider. I just see that. Rider on a white horse. Like, he's, he's triumphant. He's mm, strong. And he's faithful. Like, that strength, that faithfulness. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says, God is faithful, reliable, trustworthy, and therefore ever true to his promise, and he can be depended on. By him you were called into companionship and participation with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I love this. God is faithful, trustworthy, ever true to his promise. What does it say then? Therefore he can be depended on. Have you ever met someone where they're not very dependable? And what does that mean? You can't really trust them, right? You can't trust them because they're not dependable. God is totally dependable. Aren't you thankful? He is dependable every time, all the time. And then I love that. You are called into companionship and participation with his son. Guess what that means? We have a job to do. But we know he's faithful we know he's good. He's called us in to himself. We, what are we? We're seated in Christ. When we receive Jesus, we are grafted in. Aren't you thankful he's called us? But not only that he's called me, but he's also called me to do something. He didn't just call me. He gave me a purpose. And that purpose isn't just here on planet earth for the few years we're here. It's all into eternity. We're talking about a purpose that is eternal. Man, that's awesome. And I know I've said it before, but I'm thankful that I'm not in eternity doing nothing. I'm thankful that my purpose carries on throughout eternity, that we're still going to be ruling and reigning. There's still going to be a job. I still have something to do because I'm not a person who likes to just sit around. I'm thankful that my purpose is eternal. We serve an eternal God. And you know what? He's eternally faithful. Okay, 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. So you know what? There's times things come, but what does it say here? God's faithful, and he'll strengthen you. So you need some strength to stand. You need some strength to hold on. You need some strength to stick in there and remain faithful. Guess what? Number one, you know he's faithful, and number two, he's strengthening you to do the work he's called you to. He's strengthening you to hold to the promise. It's not in our own ability. It's in his faithfulness, his strength, his goodness. Amen? Okay, so this is the, the verse here. So um, those are some scriptures, and there's plenty more, I mean, goodness, all over the word um, of God's faithfulness. And it's not just a characteristic of him. He is that. Like, he embodies faithfulness. <laughs> You know, you can see someone go, oh, they're really faithful, but they've messed up before. No one is 100% faithful. God is. God is. That's who he is. So now that we've looked at him and we see his faithfulness, let's take a look at some people in the Bible who embodied faithfulness. And this is um, the passage of scripture that I was reading this week that kind of got me into this um, vein that just really stuck out to me. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Acts 11, and we'll start in verse, um, let's see, we'll just start in verse 23. I think that's the one I gave you, Acts 11, 23, and I'm going to read it first out of the Amplified, and then we'll read it out of a couple different translations. But it says, when he, and this is talking about Barnabas, arrived and saw what grace or favor God was bestowing upon them, he was full of joy. And he continuously exhorted, warned, urged, and encouraged them all to cleave to and remain faithful to and devoted to the Lord with resolute and steady purpose of heart. And I want to just um, stop there in that translation. So the, this is just what really stuck out to me. Barnabas came. He heard about the good things going on here, so they sent Barnabas to say, hey, check it out. Check out what's going over there, going on over there in, in that church. So they sent him, and you know what it says? He looked at him, and he saw he was happy, he was glad, all the good things that the Lord was doing. And you know what he didn't say? Good job. 
and just leave it there. You know what he said? Good job, but I'm encouraging you to stay at it. I'm encouraging you to stay faithful. You know why? Because he knew persecution was happening. Stuff was going on. He knew, you know what? There's going to be a temptation for you to draw back. There's going to be a temptation for you to let go, to not remain faithful to the Lord, to not remain faithful to what he's called you to do. But I'm not only here to tell you good job, and this is awesome, and I see God's grace on you, but I'm also here to tell you keep at it. Remain faithful. Stay devoted to the Lord. And you know what? They could probably look and go, man, we have been. But you know what? I think it's awesome that he said that. And I, this just so jumped off the page to me for us, and I felt like for our body, for us, like God saying, good job. God saying, I, he's well pleased with the people here and what we're doing. But you know what he's also saying to us? But stay faithful. It can be easy sometimes. Pastor Nate talked about it at um, church on Sunday. When we see the economy doing well and certain things, it can be easy to what? Just kind of kick our feet up and go, man, life's good. Things are going well. The economy's great. I got a good job. I got a good church. Life's good. Not a bad thing, but stay faithful. Stay faithful to what God's called us to do. Let's, as a body, Let's stay faithful this year. In 2020, let's look back and say, man, God's been faithful and we've been faithful. We've been faithful to the Lord. We've been faithful to what he's asked us to do. And so I love this. And if you keep reading further down, it says that um, Barnabas was a good man, um, full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit and full of faith. And it says, and a large company was added to the Lord. So he came, he encouraged them, he told them, hey, stay faithful, stay devoted to the Lord. And then what does it say? People were added. Did you know our faithfulness to the Lord causes people to be added to the church? Think if everyone in this room gave up and quit tonight, just quit, said, I'm done. Would that affect this city? Would that affect your family? Would that affect your coworkers? Your faithfulness causes people to be added to the kingdom. When I understand that what God has asked me to do doesn't just rest on me, meaning affect just me and my family, but what God's asked me to do affects those around me and those who are to be added to the kingdom, that makes me want to stick in, press in. Okay, so um, Acts eleven twenty three out of the CEV says, When Barnabas got there and saw how God had blessed them with undeserved grace, he was very glad. So he begged them to remain faithful to the Lord with all their hearts. So this wasn't just something that said, Hey, guys, good job, and, you know, you've been doing so good, but I just want to encourage you, stay faithful. This says he begged them. He begged them to stay faithful, not only to the Lord, but with all their heart. You know staying faithful is a heart thing? God's all about the heart. He's not about the works. He's about the heart. And faithfulness starts in the heart. Faithfulness starts in the heart. Say that. Faithfulness starts in my heart. Let's see if I... Um, okay, so let's turn to Acts 13, 43. This is just a few more examples. It says, After the synagogue was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout com converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them, and urge them to continue in the grace of God. What's that? What were, what were they saying? Hey, stay faithful. Stay at it. Continue on in the grace that God's called you to. This was, if you look all through the New Testament, this was like a common thing for them to talk about staying devoted to the Lord and keep at the work that he's called you to. You know, sometimes we have to have those friends, those people in our lives who say, hey, stay at it. Hey, don't quit. If you have not surrounded yourself with people who won't let you quit, 
You need to. You need to. That's what the body of Christ is there for. Aren't you thankful that we have examples throughout the New Testament of apostles, of the church, the churches, encouraging one another to stay at it? We have to be that body for one another. Oh, no, you're not quitting. No, 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 no. Because remember when this happened? Remember when this happened? Remember when we did this and people were added? Remember? We have to have people like that. I think Brother Mark calls them, you have to have at least two crazy friends. <laughs> crazy enough who will step on your toes. And it's welcomed. We have to welcome in people to step on our toes and kind of jerk the slack out of us sometimes. Right? Acts 20:24 20, says, "But I consider my life of no value to myself, if only I may finish my course and complete the ministry I have received from the Lord Jesus, the ministry of testifying to the good news of God's grace." So this was Paul saying, "Man, I am going to finish my course." How many of you are going to say, "I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to stay at it." Some of you, that's a declaration of faith tonight, but you need to say it. "I'm going to finish my course." I'm going to do everything God's called me to do. I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to stay at it. Did you know faithful is an active word? It's active. It means you're doing something. It means you're holding to what God's told you to do. Let's look at this, Romans 12, um, 4 through 8. It says, for as in one physical body we have many parts, organs, or members, and all of these parts do not have the same function or use. For we, numerous as we are, are one body in Christ, and individually we are parts, one of another, mutually dependent on one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given us, let us use them. He whose gift is prophecy, let him prophesy according to the proportion of his faith. He whose gift is practical service, let him give himself to serving. He who teaches for, uh, to his teaching, he who exhorts or encourages to his exhortation, he who contributes, let him do it in simplicity and liberality. He who gives aid and superintends with zeal and singleness of mind, he who does acts of mercy with genuine cheerfulness and joyful eagerness. And I saw this today, one body, right? Many parts with different functions. Aren't you thankful that your body parts for the most part are faithful? When one of your body parts is not faithful, it sort of throws a kink in things, doesn't it? What do you see? There's lots of people in the hospital right now whose body parts are not faithful. They're not working right. So when I'm not faithful, it affects not just me, my little part. It affects the whole body. And what's it saying? If you have a gift, use it and use it faithfully. What does it do? It builds up the body. Sometimes we need to thank some other parts of the body. Because you know what that does? That spurs others on in their faithfulness. Do you know how many times I've wanted to quit and give up? And just in time. Someone comes, whether it be a note, a word of encouragement, the Lord through his word, whatever it might be, through a minister, through a teaching I received that that person didn't even know blessed me. But what was it? Faithful to do their part? Are you faithful to do your part? Faithful to do your part can even be as simple as when the Lord gives you a simple instruction to encourage someone. Do it. Be faithful with it. When he gives you a word, say it. I had someone last night at prayer that said, the Lord's just been telling me to be bold with what he's put on my heart and to give voice to it. And they came up and gave voice to it. And you know what? It blessed me immensely. Actually confirmed some stuff we had been talking about. What is that? Faithful. Faithful was something the Lord gave them. And they gave it. Now guess what the Lord can do? Give them more. Because they're faithful with that. 
you've wanted to experience more, start being faithful with what he's given you. If you feel like you've been lacking more, look at your faithfulness. Where's it been at? Have I been doing fully what God's asked me to do? Faithfulness is simply doing what God's asked me to do. There's faithfulness in my local church. There's faithfulness on my job. There's faithfulness in my marriage. There's faithfulness in my relationships. All across we can look and see areas of faithfulness. And you know what? The Lord's going to show us areas. Hey, hey, right here. You've let that go. You've let that, that area go. Then you know what we do? Thank you, Lord, for showing me that. And I ask you to help me. Give me strength to be faithful in this area. You know what? He's not going to bombard you with 50 things to be faithful in. He's going to show you one, maybe a couple things. He's a good God. He doesn't overwhelm us. But those things we can say, you know what? Thank you, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to be faithful in that. And then you know what? He'll show us another thing. But you know what it does for us? It opens us up to receive more from him. How many of you want more from him this year? I do. What does it say? The faithful man abounds. Um, let's look here. Um, Galatians 5.22. It says, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes, is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against, against such things there is no law. And I love that because faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. Did you know when you were born again, you received the Spirit? Therefore, all of these fruit are in you. We don't have to try to like work up this faithfulness and turn it into a uh, work effort. What is it? Simply sitting with the one who's faithful, recalling his faithfulness, and then going, you know what, Lord? That is a fruit of your spirit. Therefore, it's on the inside of me. Therefore, I have faithfulness. I have faithfulness on the inside that I can draw from. You know you're not drawing from your own strength. You're drawing from the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has faithfulness, and he's in us. Therefore, we have faithfulness in us. We just have to draw on that faithfulness. Let's look at 1 Timothy 1.12. It says, I give thanks to him who has granted me the needed strength and made, made me able for this. Christ Jesus our Lord, because he has judged and counted me faithful and trustworthy, appointing me to this stewardship of the ministry. And I love this because it says, number one, he gives thanks to him. And number two, because God gave him strength. God gave him strength to be faithful to what God had asked him to do. It says that God counted him faithful and appointed him to this stewardship of the ministry. Do you know each of you have a stewardship of the ministry? Sometimes we look at Paul and the apostles and we think, well, I'm not a pastor on staff or I'm not this. Each of you have a ministry. God has appointed you a specific part in the ministry. So let this be said of me. You know each one of us in this room can say this. Thank you, Lord, that you've granted me strength. You've made me able to do this. You've judged and counted me faithful and put me over this part of the ministry. Whatever he's called you to do in your vocation, in your family, some of you may be stay-at-home parents, you may be in the workforce, you may have a business, whatever it is he's called you to do in this season, your grace to do it. He's appointed you over it. What's it ultimately for? To build the kingdom. So you know what? We need all of us to be faithful to it. 
He wouldn't put you where you're at. He wouldn't give you the talents. He wouldn't give you the graces, the ability to do what you're doing if you haven't been faithful. Aren't you thankful that he's counted us faithful? And you know what? The increase and the more that he wants us to do, the greater reach, the greater extension of him, he wants that. And you know what that more is tied to? Our faithfulness. So this is a good question to ask ourselves. God counted Paul faithful. Where I'm at right now, can God count me faithful? Can God count on me to be faithful? How many of you want to be counted among the faithful? We all do. When do you ever hear of a Christian saying, I can't do that, I'm sorry, I'm really unfaithful? <laughs> That's silly, right? If someone asks us to do something, whether it be a person or a leader or a boss or whoever it might be, or the Lord, we never want to call it, sorry, I can't do that, I'm being unfaithful, or I choose to be unfaithful. But essentially, that's what we're saying. Sorry, Lord, I can't do that. Right now, I'm choosing to be unfaithful. Sorry, so-and-so, I can't do that because I'm choosing to be unfaithful. Now, if we said that, if we actually voiced that, we might rethink the decision we were choosing to make. You know, anything God asks us to do is not going to be comfortable. If we base our faithfulness off of what's comfortable in life, we're not going to go very far. Because you know what? Anything he asks you to do is going to require faith. It's going to require his assistance. If we could just do it, and I shared this last night at, at the small group leader meeting. I didn't even want to be a pastor's wife. And actually said no. And could reword it to, sorry, mom and dad, no, I don't want to. I'd rather be unfaithful. <laughs> I always knew I wanted to be in the ministry, but I never saw myself in like, I was just sharing this with Matthew last night. I never saw myself in like a certain position or a, a certain place. Just always my heart was, I just want to do what God's told me to do. And I always saw myself in ministry. And I would have been happy and content to serve under my mom and dad or whoever for the rest of my life. I was great with that. And as soon as they asked me, it was like, oh, my lanta. And my mind was going a million miles an hour. I don't know how to counsel people. I don't even fit the bill of a pastor's wife. I'm way too young. I hate being in front of people. I don't like teaching. I've hardly ever taught. Anytime Nate ever asks me to teach in youth, I always make up an excuse why I can't. True. He said fact. But you know what it took? All of the reasons would have been easy to say no. And my mind was saying, no. But you know what my heart was saying? You need to say, yeah. You need to say, yes. And you know what? As soon as I said that yes and made that determination to say yes, there was a grace and ability to do it. A love for the city, a love for the church. It was amazing. But you know what? I felt very unqualified. I felt every reason in the book, I was naming it. I mean, I even told my dad, like, you need to write down everything for how to counsel people. Like, I need a book. You can ask him because he still laughs about it. Like, I don't even know how to do it, and you're going to have to write down everything for how to do this. He said, I'm not writing anything. It's called follow the Holy Spirit. I was like, dang it. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> but you know what that is? That's called life. And if we run from everything that's uncomfortable that God or another person asks us to do, we're essentially running from the call. And when we run from the call, we run from the people who are supposed to come into the kingdom from our call. 
And then when we get to the other side of heaven, I want him to look at me and say, well done. Good and what? You've done everything I've asked you to do. I don't want to get up there and go, good and faithful for part of it. And then with this piece, you said no. I want good and faithful. How many of you want good and faithful servant? What is that? Faithfulness is, if, if you're considered a faithful person, you're a yes person. What does that mean? I say yes when he asks me to do something. If you, if you look, a faithful person in the corporate world, a faithful person on your job, if, if you were to ask people, what is a faithful person? It's they're always there, they're reliable, and they're, they do what was asked of them. A faithful person is not someone who does what they want to do. If I say, hey, Mona, I need you to go and take out the trash at this trash can here by the door, if you could please do that. She goes, oh, okay, yeah, Pastor Evan. And then she goes and takes out the two tra- all the other trash cans except that one. Is that a faithful person? What's a faithful person? Does what was asked. What does faithfulness take? Humility. It takes us bowing our will bowing what we deem as the best thing and saying, God, what you're asking me, I humble myself under that and I submit to your leadership. And I say yes to you because you know more than I do. You know, he created you from before you were ever born, he knew you, set you apart, created you and your destiny. I think he knows. I think he knows more than we know. Proverbs 26, it says, Most men will proclaim every one of his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. That's a question mark. A faithful man who can find. What does that mean? It's not very common to have faithful men. I want to be uncommon. What does that mean? Uncommonly faithful. If it's not common in the world, if it's not common in the church, I want to be the uncommon one who's faithful. I want to be one where when Jesus up in heaven is looking for assignments and for people to do his work on the earth, that he goes, oh, yep, beyond church. Wow. That's full of faithful people. I'll look right there because those people say yes. Those people do what I ask them to do. You could be a most men or you could be a faithful man. Most men, meaning unfaithful, or a faithful man or woman. Am I about building a name for myself? Am I about building my own life? Going about my day, going about just doing my own thing? Or am I about serving my master? My Lord, being faithful to him, coming underneath his leadership, submitting myself under him and saying, Lord, what would you have me do? Okay, I'll do that. And you know what? When that's done, then I come back and I say, what else would you have me do? Okay, I'll do that. And you know what? Sometimes your assignment may be years long. And you may be thinking, I've been at it. I've been at it. I've been doing it. Do you think Abraham... Thought, Lord, I've, you told me this. I've been faithful to believe, faithful to believe, faithful to believe. Then what happened? He tried to make it happen. Then what happened? He got back on the bandwagon of believing the Lord, being faithful, holding to, and what do we see? His promise arrived right on time. So I just want to encourage you, if you've thought of throwing in the towel in certain areas because it just seems monotonous and I've, I've been coming to church, I've been giving, I've been doing all of these things, stay at it. Don't quit. Stay at it. Remain faithful. Go back to the Lord. Lord, did you tell me to do this? Is this what you've told me to do? Okay, once I get the clear on that, then I'm sticking to it and I'm not moving and I'm going to be faithful to it. Faithfulness isn't the easy, quick road. 
It's not like I show up one time and that's faithful. That's not faithful. Faithful is over and over and over in, for the long haul. That's one thing I admire about Pastor Mac and Lynn, which is my old pastors up at um, Living Word. One thing that I, well, a couple things I could say about him, very loyal, but number two, faithful. He's stayed at it. He's not quit. He's not moved churches. He's not quit on the vision that God's shown him. He's remained faithful, steady, reliable. The people who go there know the church doors aren't shutting. <laughs> We're not wondering where Pastor Mac is or what's gone on. Why? Because he's stayed faithful. What has God asked you to do? Stay faithful. Proverbs 28, 20, I mentioned this verse uh, just a little bit ago, but it says, a faithful or right-minded man will abound with blessings. Aren't you thankful that God promises us? It's not like, oh, stay faithful, but you got nothing coming. Stay faithful. The faithful man will what? Abound in blessings. And that's not just talking about here on earth. Yes, here on earth, but into eternity. Do you know we're rewarded for what we do here? I'm not trying to work on my salvation. That's already done. But I am working for a reward. Every one of you in here are working for a reward. And there's a lot of people when we get to the other side that are going to go, man, I wish I would have done more. Let's say this. By the grace of God, I will be faithful. Let's say it again. By the grace of God, I will be faithful. 1 Corinthians 4.2 says, Moreover, it is essentially required of stewards that a man should be found faithful, proving himself to be worthy of trust. This is a good question to ask. Are we stewards? Let me say that again. Are we stewards? Yes, we're stewards. How should a steward be found? What does that mean? Can God count on me? Let's ask ourselves that question. Can God count on me? Or can he count on me a few months out of the year? Or can he count on me all the time? Am I reliable? Am I a faithful steward? 1 Corinthians 4.2 it's out of the Living Bible, says, Now the most important thing about a servant is that he does just what his master tells him to. What is that? Doing exactly what the Lord's asked me to do, not quitting, not dropping short, doing it faithfully. Did you know you can't be faithful without submitting? I can play the part of acting like it, but this is what we talked about earlier. It all comes down to my heart. I may be able to fake people and act like I'm being faithful, but you know what? Deep down inside, right? So I can show up to work at my 9 to 5 job every day, and my boss could look at me and go, yeah, they're faithful. They show up all the time, but really, I'm not faithful, why? Because my heart. I'm annoyed I have to go to work. I hate this. I don't like my coworkers. My boss is frustrating, but yeah, I'm showing up nine to five. Well, is that really faithfulness? When I come in to serve, if I'm annoyed that I have to serve and I'm scheduled again and I have to do this instead of I get to do it, I get to be a part of serving my local church, and the people in my city. I get to do this. I get to serve. I can show up all the time. I could show up every Sunday and Wednesday. And you know what they'd say? Pastor Evan, you're really faithful. You never miss church. But that's not faithfulness. Faithfulness is doing what God's asked me to do. Yeah, it's coming, but it's coming submitted to him. So let's, let's check ourselves. The next time that attitude wants to pop up of frustration, bitterness, anger, 
strife, whatever it might be, and go, Lord, you know what? I'm doing this for you, and it's a heart check here. I am going to be faithful, not in just outward appearance, out here, but right here. Where am I faithful? Not just outwardly, that's great, and we need to be. But more importantly, inwardly. Where's my heart at? In what I'm doing, in my local church, on my job, in my family, in my marriage, is my heart right? Am I faithful in my heart? Because you know who sees that? God. God sees our heart. And we can't hide it from him. Now, that's not to bring condemnation. That's to be, thank you, Lord, because I can come before you, what does it say, boldly to receive what? The grace and mercy I need to do what you've asked me to do. So let's just ponder this, and you can write it in your notes, and maybe this will be good before you go to bed tonight or first thing in the morning. What has God told me to do? What has God told me to do? And you may look and, you know, it may be in your family. that You may have something that has come up, up to you at your church, on, at, at, on your job, whatever it might be. But what has God asked me to do? And that's the first step. Lord, what have you asked me to do? Right now, what have you asked me to do? And let him show you. And then when he shows you, look and go, how's my heart been with that? How have I been doing on that? Where's my heart been? Has it just been outward actions of faithfulness? Or has my heart been attached to that? (laughs) Inwardly and outwardly. So let's just make a commitment tonight to live a faithful life. Lord, I commit to live a faithful life to you in my outward actions and inwardly in my heart. And I would say this, don't leave your post. In other words, don't leave the spot that you're called to. Just like we read earlier, you've been given a gift. You've been put over a ministry. You've, you are a part of the body. You have a specific purpose and a specific call. Don't leave that call. Don't leave your purpose. Live your life faithfully, and what is that? Simply doing what God's asked me to do. Okay, um, Acts one twenty one. This is an example. Um, So we know Jesus had 12 disciples, and then we know Judas betrayed him, right, and ended up hanging himself. So there was only 11 disciples, so they needed to find one more disciple. And I love this, Acts 1, 21 through 22. I'm reading out of the NIV. It says, therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So what do we see? Did they just choose someone and they, they just thought, hmm, who should we choose What did they say? Let's choose someone who's been with us. What does that exemplify? Let's choose someone from the very beginning, all the way from John the Baptist, all the way until now. Guess what? They've been there. They've been around. They've been faithful. When people were talking bad about Jesus and the disciples, they were there still. When Jesus was talking about eat my flesh and drink my blood and all these people left, guess what? They stuck around. When persecution came for being with Jesus, guess what? They were still there. If we want to be chosen, we got to be faithful. I want to be chosen. I want to be faithful. So it says, if you, if you read on further, it was Matthias, I think, and some other guy. Did you know that only two, they only found two who fit that bill? Remember that verse we talked about earlier? How few 
it's very uncommon to find faithful. I want our body, that to be common. Not uncommon. When God looks, when people look, and they see beyond church, they see us, they see faithful. They see people who don't quit. They see people who are invested fully into the kingdom of God, outwardly and inwardly. Did you know neither of these people you see all through the Gospels of these two guys? It's not like they were named. It's not like they were famous and they got to teach a bunch and you don't see their names mentioned. But you know what? They didn't care. They were following Jesus. They were doing what God asked them to do. They were staying faithful to the call. So God isn't choosing us based on how much we're known. God isn't basing choosing us on how popular we are, how much notoriety we have. God's choosing us based on our yes and our heart to serve him and our faithfulness. Did you know it wasn't their talent? You don't hear them talking about, oh, we need to choose these people. They are so gifted. They are so talented. You should see them. Mm -mm. Know what the qualification was? Ones who have been with us. You know the people who stick out? I've been in leadership for a little while. And you know the people who stick out are the ones every time you turn around, there they are. That, that's what I picture about, Med, I don't know how you say his name. We'll just call him Matt to keep it short. That's what I see about this guy. You know why he stuck out as one of the two? There he is. Oh, there's Matt again. Oh, yeah, Matt brought wood over for the fire so the disciples and Jesus could. There he was. Can that be said of me? There they are. Or where are they? I want Jesus to go, there she is. Not, man, every time I turn around, she's gone. It's like I go to turn around to ask her to do something. She's not here. Do you know how frustrating that is? We just experienced that tonight before church. Asking someone to do something who will go unnamed. <laughs> and you go away to get ready before church and you come out and it's like, what has gone on? Nothing. We asked you to do the dishes, to do this, and you come out, and it's like, oh, I did it. Oh, you put one plate in the sink. Bravo. <laughs> but seriously, is that how, is that? <laughs> I feel you, Joe. <laughs> Amen. But is that how my faithfulness is? The very least amount I can do? To justify myself? Oh, check that box. Yeah, I could have done this, 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 and this, because this would have really been faithful. But, you know, I just skirted it and did this much. I just pointed it out to the boys. We were at Chick-fil-A, and there was people sweeping late at night cleaning up. It was last night. Yes, after prayer, we went to Chick-fil-A. It was amazing. One last hoorah before we get strict in our eating again. Anyway, so we went all out. Fries, <laughs> sandwich, ice cream, all of it. Anyway, so there was these younger kids, and they were sweeping. And I said, hey, boys, when the day comes when you have a job like this or any kind of job, if I'm that guy sweeping and my manager says, hey, go sweep the floors, what should I do? And they said, well, sweep the floors. Well, what about that chair that's right there that I really want to go home because it's pushing 10 o'clock, but there's a chair sitting there. Do I move the chair to sweep or do I just kind of go around it? Well, no, you should move the chair. Even when I don't want to? Yeah. Do you know what that is? Faithful. Doing fully what's asked. 
You know what? That boss may be back behind the counter not even paying attention. But I know. And God knows. And then Nate was talking. He said, with painting, I had to do the same thing. There's lots of areas that your customers don't see. And so one of our boys said, so you probably skimped on it, right? Like you didn't paint those areas. And Nate goes, no, I painted every one of them. He goes, not all the time. Nate goes, yeah, I did, every time. And his eyes kind of went. And I said, and that served me really well because one of his customers was down on their hands and knees, okay, looking underneath the cabinets, looking closely at the walls, crawling around. He could have been really frustrated and been, but you know what? He could have also not done the job, and he would have been caught. But him doing fully his job got me out of a speeding ticket. (laughs) His faithfulness has paid off for another member of the body. (laughs) I was going down 71, going a little fast. And the policeman pulled me over, and I, he said, yes, for those of you who know my car and vehicle, I do drive a little fast. Um, but he's, he said, ma'am, do you know how fast you're going? I said, I don't, but I do know it was very fast, and I'm just trying to get to work on time. <laughs> he said, Lic- uh, whatever, your license and registration. So I handed it to him, and he walked back and did whatever, came back. And he's like, Schlegel. Are you related to Nate Schlegel, the painter? Nathan Schlegel, the painter? And I said, yeah, actually, that's my husband. And he goes, oh, my gosh, he painted my house and da, da, and went on to this whole conversation. I see you're pregnant because I was pregnant with Caleb, and my wife's due about the same time. How far along are you? And, you know, just this whole conversation. And I'm like, I am so out of this ticket. And... <laughs> And then uh, a minute later, he's like, well, you know, he did such an amazing job, and you guys just have a great day, and, you know, probably just slow it down a little next time. I'm like, thank you. Yes, see you later. And then I call Nate, and I'm like, you doing your job so well. Save me a ticket. (laughs) But you know what? That's called faithfulness, doing fully. Where where am I slipping in because I, I know... Not everyone sees it. And I've convinced myself it's okay there. But you know what? If I realize who I'm doing it for, who I'm doing it to, I won't slip there. Because I know I'm doing it for him. And so I should do it all the way. Fully. With a good heart. Like we tell our kids, all the way right away, and with a happy heart. That's how I should do my service unto the Lord, all the way, right away, and with a happy heart. I should be the one that my boss, that my spouse, my relationships, my church family, I should be the one when they turn around, there I am, that I'm a faithful steward of what he's given me. And great faithfulness is proven when you don't feel like it. Like last night at Chick-fil-A, Samuel's like, is he not doing a good job sweeping? I'm like, no, I'm not saying that. I haven't even been watching him. I'm just pointing out when we do a job, we do it fully. Which means even though I want to go home, keyword I, I don't care about the next customer who could see the crumbs on the floor or slip on the saucy ketchup that spilled because I don't want to clean it up and it's under their table where no one can see it. But you know what? If I saw it, then I should be faithful to clean it up and do it all the way. Finish fully. Even with the call that God has on my life, finish fully. How many of you know Jesus is coming back soon? Say it again. Jesus is coming back soon. And you know what? We have a job to do. And when he comes back, I want to be found faithful that I did what he's asked me to do. And you know what? With not much time left, that means I need to press in even more. Because you know what? There's a lot of people who still have to be reached. 
which means my faithfulness must increase. Now is not a time to draw back. What does Hebrews tell us? We are not of those who draw back. What does that mean? If I'm not drawing back, then I'm pressing in. I'm pressing in greater to what he's asked me to do. I'm pressing in greater to the faithfulness Revelation twenty two twelve 12 says, Behold, I am coming soon, and I shall bring my wages and rewards with me to repay and render to each one just what his own actions and his own work merit. Man, Jesus is coming back soon. Not only is he coming back soon, but he's coming back soon with reward. Wishy-washy and hidden mist does not work in the kingdom of God. Did you know that? When we get to heaven, it's not going to be wishy-washy. It's not hit or miss. Oh, shoot, Mona, I forgot to build your mansion. Oh, shoot, you did do that, and I totally forgot to get your reward. It's not hit or miss or wishy-washy. And you know what? If we serve a God who's faithful, if we serve one who's not wishy-washy, if we serve one who's reliable, then we should be a people who model our master. I should be someone who models my master, who is faithful, reliable. Let's not be people who bail at the slightest problem. Problems come and we bail, uh-uh. Someone looks at us wrong and we quit. Mm -mm. Let's endure. Let's be faithful. Faithful in spiritual things and also in natural things. A sobering thought is this. How I'm living right now determines uh, the reward that I receive from him. How I'm living and what I'm doing right now is determining the reward that I get on the other side. When I stand before him, I want to hear, I want all of us to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. It matters if you are doing something as a part of the body of Christ. It matters. What you're doing in your local church matters. What you're doing on your job and in your family matters. My faithfulness isn't up to God. My faithfulness is up to me. And only what I've done through him and for him will make it into eternity. Do you know the chair you're sitting on, the stuff you have? None of that makes it into eternity. But look to the person to the right and to the left. That goes on into eternity. Your call goes on into eternity. What you've done for him, whether seen or unseen. Do you know there is so many things we do that are not seen for him? He sees all of it. People may not see it, but he sees all of it. But there's so many things we do, we never get a good job, Mona. Way to pray that prayer today. Good job. Way to open the door for that person. Good job. Way to buy that grocery. Good job, whatever it might be. But you know what? It's faithfulness. And it's doing something for him. So guess what that means? He never forgets that. Any good deed done for him, what does it say? Even a cup of cold water that you give to a child, what does it say? We'll be remembered. The things we do for him carry on forever. Isn't that amazing? And it's actually very sobering to think that what I'm doing day in and day out, that has become mundane, that maybe has become frustrating, that maybe I haven't put my whole heart into. I think it's good for us to take those things and go, Lord, I want to be found faithful I want my heart in what you've asked me to do, whether big or small, whether I deem it valuable or invaluable. Do you know it's valuable? If he's asked you to do it, it's valuable. Whether it's seen or not seen or whether you think, oh, it's just little, it doesn't matter. It matters. 
you know what? Nate could have, Pastor Nate could have thought, oh, it doesn't matter under this cabinet. Who cares? No one's going to see it. But you know what? Maybe the 50 houses he did, no one did. But that one house, they, they would have noticed. Do you know our faithfulness, people notice. The world notices it. It stands out. Our faithfulness draws people to him. Us sticking with it draws people to him. This last verse here, and then uh, we'll close. You can play, Chris, if you'd like. Psalms 102 says, serve the Lord with gladness. What is this? This is what I, I just saw. This is a heart thing. Is what I'm doing for the Lord with gladness? Because you know what? If my heart is tied to it and I'm serving him with gladness, do you know it won't be hard to be faithful? When my heart's right and I'm doing what I'm doing joyfully with thanks that, man, you would call me, that you'd even call me, that you'd even choose me, and that what I'm doing, I do it fully, I do it with joy and with gladness to serve you, do you know faithfulness will come pretty easy when I have the right heart? I won't have to muster it up. This is a heart thing. Faithfulness, like we said at the beginning, is all about what our heart. So I just want us to close our eyes tonight. And I want us to just have a moment here as Chris plays, just where you get before the Lord for the next minute or so. And you can continue this on tonight or in the morning, your time with the Lord. But just, Lord, search my heart. Show me those places that I, have, I haven't been serving you with gladness, that I haven't been serving you fully, that it's just been emotion, or I haven't been doing it fully to honor and to please you. And let's make those heart adjustments. You know, it's so easy. It's just a simple, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for that area or areas where I haven't been honoring you, where I haven't been serving you fully, where I've maybe quit, where I've maybe let go, where maybe people around are going, where am I? Where are you? And let's recommit our lives tonight to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to be found faithful. And give me, just like Paul said, that he gives us the needed strength. So thank you, Lord, over this body tonight, over this people. You're giving us the needed strength, the needed strength to serve you and to serve you faithfully with our whole heart. And tonight we do. We just turn our heart toward you and we say, you have my heart. You have my actions, all that I do. May I be found faithful that when I get over into heaven, I would hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's just say, Lord, we love you. We honor you. And we thank you for calling us and choosing us. And we say yes to you. Yes to what you've asked us to do. We take those bold steps of faith. And we thank you that you're right there with us. And we can serve the faithful one. And we can be faithful because you're faithful to us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there any closing stuff I'm supposed to say? Besides, we'll see you Sunday. Come Sunday. And I did want to encourage you, we don't... Um, really have time. Well, actually we will. I'm just going to take one minute because I saw this. Um, but I just saw us just together coming and just um, praying over President Trump and over our country. And um, Pastor Nate even hit it, but in First Timothy, I think it's four, um, it talks about praying for all men, especially those who are in authority, that you may live godly and peaceable life. And you know, regardless of who's our president, we are commanded by God to pray for them, whether we like them or not, is irregardless. We honor the position that they hold, and we honor that person. And so I just want to encourage you, bless him with the words of your mouth. 
with what you post. Bless our leaders, our mayor, any your bosses, anyone who's in authority over you. We're called to honor and we're called to bless. And how we bless and honor is through our words and our actions. And so I think just being very mindful of what we're saying, whether it be social media or whether it be just person to person in our families, in our homes, let our words honor and lift up and build up our leaders. Amen. So, Father, we just worship you tonight. We thank you. And tonight we just, as a body, we come together and, and we just lift up President Trump, all of our leaders cabinet, senate, house of representatives, we just lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for wisdom, wisdom from on high to make decisions, uh, your decisions, your, the right decisions, your way, Father. We just speak divine protection over him, over uh, his wife and his son, his family, Father. We thank you. Nothing will come near them. No destruction, no calamity. We just apply the blood of Jesus over them, over this country, this nation, every city, every uh, governing official, over all of our schools and our school systems. We thank you. No weapon formed against this nation can prosper. Angels, we loose you round about to guard and protect. We thank you for wisdom, for things being exposed, for light on things that need to be seen. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now for real, you guys are dismissed.